Lou would have a smudge of black on him right up there. Yeah, yeah, and George Primrose had one right down here. That's right, and oh, gosh, there were a host of others. Names and fellas like Honey Boy Evans and Bert Williams. Yeah, yeah, and Eddie Leonard and Al Jolson. Oh, man, you're talking about the tops there. And while we're at it, while we're at it, don't you forget those old end men there. Oh, those comical end men. <laughs> What you're watching is clips from the 1950 blackface performance by Glenn Vernon and Edward Ryan. The blatant racism was common during the Jim Crow era and permeated throughout American culture and ideals. African American people were portrayed as unintelligent and incapable of helping themselves, a stereotype that comedians played heavily on in their performances. So where did the idea that African American people were inherently unintelligent come from? Because slaves were the lowest social class, they were often viewed as uneducated due to their inability to perceive an education and the idea that white people were superior to black people. Even after the slaves were freed in 1865, the idea of an unintelligent black person still prevailed. In his book, The Measurement of Intelligence, Lewis Terman, a psychologist who laid the foundations for the current IQ test, when talking about African American people wrote, and I quote, no amount of school instruction will ever make them intelligent voters or capable citizens in the sense of the world. When talking about African American children, he stated that their dullness seems to be racial, or at least inherently in the family stock from which they come. This quote-unquote scientific proof affirmed the derogatory view of African Americans, leading it to pervade throughout American culture and media as illustrated by the many many more grim examples of blackface and Jim Crow characters that disparage the intelligence of black people. But how does this stereotype reflect itself in modern day American culture? Credited author and racial activist Ta-Nehisi Coates would argue that former President Barack Obama laid down the brick and mortar for America to move past many racial stereotypes. In his article for The Atlantic, My President Was Black, Coates reflects on how Barack and Michelle Obama set out to normalize being black. In his article, he says, Against the narrow images of welfare moms and deadbeat dads, his time in the White House became a symbol of black people's everyday extraordinary Americanness. A symbol like the Obamas is powerful for eliminating prejudice against African Americans. President Obama has set an amazing example of how to move past the assumptions of previous generations and into a new era where acceptance is key. The real question is, has the rest of the country followed suit or are we as a nation stuck in the past? We are humans. We are people who have feelings and dreams. We are Americans. Through all of life's struggles, we should be united as a common defense against that which threatens to overwhelm us. Yet, amidst all of the sadness and evil of this world, We'd are, we divide ourselves with things like racism and discrimination. We may have skin of differing pigments, but at the end of the day, we are all humans. This is the dawn of a new age, ushered in by public figures like President Obama and Reverend Al Sharpton, that has the potential to turn racism and prejudice into acceptance and justice. President Obama, this is our time to act. This is our time to speak out against injustices done to others, whether they are of our own race or not. This is our best chance, our time to take action. This is our best option. We're all humans. It's time to get rid of the stereotyping and discriminating. This, this is, is our time. time. This, this is, is the, the end, end and, and also, also the beginning. beginning.